Hi, this is Mark Meyer from MarTech Hero. In this video, we're going to use Zapier to download a bunch of records from a marketing automation tool called Eloqua. But then we're going to have the Zap use something called Code by Zapier. And we're going to do it this way so it prevents us from using a whole bunch of tasks on one Zap. Let's say our source data has 100,000 records in it. We don't want to use up 100,000 tasks on one zap just to download that. So I'm going to show you one way we could do this. And also, in this example, we're going to use something called Eloqua. And Eloqua is a marketing automation tool, as many of you know. And they have something called custom objects within Eloqua, where you can store a lot of data um, and uh, various different things. But oftentimes, there's a need or a request to have this custom object data automatically downloaded every day, for example. In fact, on the Eloqua Topliners community, this is one of the most requested features is to have a way to automatically download custom object data into a, you know, a Google Sheet or an SFTP site automatically. Currently out of the box, there's no way to do this with Eloqua, but we are gonna do this by using Zapier. So I'm on Eloqua here now, and this is the custom object test account that I set up here. So as you can see, it just has a little under 700 records, 692 records, and the record fields are just email, first name, last name, company, and country. So I wanna download all of these records automatically daily and I'm going to do that using Zapier. So let's jump back over to Zapier and we're going to create a Zap. So we're going to create a new Zap. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give this a name. So we'll just call it Custom Objects Download. And then the first thing to ask us in Zapier is what triggers this event? So in this case, uh, we're gonna use a schedule by Zapier. We want this to run uh, every day. Actually, for this example, I'm gonna change this to every hour. I'm gonna hit continue. Um, yeah, that's fine if it triggers on weekends. And we can just test this. It basically just makes sure it's set up correctly. And it is, not much to that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the data from Eloqua with, from this custom object using um, a webhook because we're going to actually use it, do an API call to Eloqua for this. So I'm going to select webhooks by Zapier. And we're going to use a Git request in this example. Now, I have a lot more information if you're just looking for how to get Zapier to work with Eloqua. I have another video here on the Smart Tech Hero YouTube channel that walks you through exactly how to set this up, and it'll be much more detailed than this one. Um, but assuming you already know how to do that part, I'm going to kind of just go through this a little faster. But please go watch that video if you just want to see how you actually set Zapier up with Eloqua in the API requests. So anyway, I select a Git, I'm gonna hit continue. And it asks for us, it asks us for the URL. And this particular uh, Git request URL is as follows. Uh, this is basically just saying it's gonna go out to this REST API and grab custom object ID number 25, which happens to be tied to this custom object. And like I said, I'll get more into how you use the APIs with Eloqua in that other video. Uh, we don't have any query string, per, query string parameters. Uh, this can stay as no, JSON key, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, now we'll just fill out the headers. Okay, and then once we have that, we're going to hit continue, and we're going to test it. And that correctly pulled over the API. So it pulled over a list of all uh, the records that are in that custom object. As you can see, if I scroll down, um, 
you'll keep seeing all the values for the different users that are in that CDO. So that worked great. Now that we have this, one thing we could do is um, we could just put, there's a few ways we could do this, but we could just go right to a Google Sheet and add this. Uh, but then you could run into getting charged for tasks for all of these. Like if you have 100,000 records in your CDO, you could get charged for 100,000 tasks, which obviously if you know how expensive Zapier is, you wouldn't want to do that. So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to click the next step. And then we're going to use this thing called code by Zapier. And then it says uh, the event. You could do JavaScript code or Python. We're just going to do Python. We're going to hit continue. Uh, we don't need to put any input data up here. And down here, we could put our code. Uh, I'll put this code into uh, the comment section below in this video. Let me just paste in what we need. And now I'll just go through and show you what this is doing. This top section, uh, import requests, uh, this is just a popular Python library method for making HTTP uh, requests. And then we set up the API endpoints and headers in, in this section. And obviously your authorization token would be filled out here, not just these X's that I just put in there to, for a filler. This response uh, equals requests part. That's just a get request that's made to the provided URL with the defined headers. Uh, down here, we just have some error handling. If something goes wrong, it'll let us know. And then this uh, JS equals response.json. That's a method that just parses the JSON content of the response and returns it as a, as a uh, Python dictionary. And then we're setting up some empty lists here. Uh, the goal is to fetch data for each of these attributes. So if elements is not found in the JS uh, dictionary, the, the get method defaults to an empty list to prevent errors in the following loop. And here's the loop right here. So basically for, for each item in the data, the, the code tries to get the list of field values. Um, this just makes sure that there's at least five field values. I just put that in just for testing reasons. And then down here, after it loops through all of the people that are in the CDO, it just outputs it. So this data is extracted from the API and it's aggregated into a dictionary called output, which is right here. So we'll continue with that. And we could test this step. So we're gonna hit test step. Hopefully everything works okay. And it worked perfectly. So this Python code that we just did, as you can see, it broke out each of those fields that are in our Eloqua CDO. It broke them out. So now it first lists all the email addresses for all the people that are in the CDO. And if I keep scrolling down, then it gets to the first name and then the last name, company, and country, and so forth. So that, that works great. So now, we have all the data. It's in this, uh, this Python code here. We just want to get that to a Google Sheet. So I'm going to click another step here, and we're going to add it to a Google Sheet. So what we want to do here, now, if we think about this, we have multiple rows of data in here, right? Because there's you know almost 700 records. So we want to create multiple spreadsheet rows. So I'm going to click that. Hit continue. And then it's asking me what uh, Google Sheet or Google Drive account should I be using for this. So let me just select that. And then I'm going to continue. And then uh, the drive, it's my Google Drive. And the spreadsheet, I already created the spreadsheet. Uh, it's called Eloqua CDO Export. There's right there. And the worksheet, there's only one sheet on this spreadsheet, so it's sheet one. And there you have it. So what I did is it went out to the spreadsheet and it retrieved these rows or these column headers. If I didn't have the column headers filled in yet, it would actually give you a little message here that says fill out some column headers. So, um, but it already had it, so it, it just pulled in those column headers. So now what we do with that we simply select email address, 
and it says, where, what data do you want to insert into this? So we want to insert data from this Python code. So, and we want to select the email. So the email data goes into the email address, which makes sense. The first name, once again, we want to get it from the Python code that we just ran. That's first name. Last name. Last name. Company. Just passed it. Uh, where did it go? Company. And finally, the country. Is the country. So then it looks like this. Email, first name, last name, company, country. And then I'm going to hit continue. And it says this is basically what it's going to try to pass. Now, it puts it all in one comma separated line, all 700 or so uh, rows of data. But when it actually inserts it into uh, Google Sheets, it'll break that out into separate rows. So once again, here's the Google Sheet. There's nothing in there. So now we're going to hit this test, this step. So we're going to test it. And it says it was successful about three seconds ago. So let's bounce back over to Google Sheets and see what it looks like. And there you have it. It's all in there. So this works perfectly. And that's actually all there is to this zap. Um, then all we have to do is scroll down here. And then we could just publish it. And in this case, every hour, this would run again, um, which is a little bit you know, more frequently than you'd probably need this. But this, uh, a lot of people have requests to have this run daily, like every night they want the CDO file uh, downloaded. And then once it's in this Google Sheet, I mean, you could do numerous different things with it. You could keep sending it on to a different system. You could put it on an SFTP site to save someplace. Uh, you could do a lot of things with it. But by doing it this way, this entire Zap only uses up like three or four tasks. It doesn't use up, you know, like 700 tasks because we have 700 people in the CDO, which just saves you a lot of tasks. Um, now, one question you might have is every time this runs, it's just going to add to the bottom of this list, right? It's not going to overwrite it. So what you might want to do if you want a fresh list is you might want to clear out this data like maybe an hour before this is scheduled to run. If it runs every night at midnight, maybe you want this data cleared out at 11 p.m., you know, so then it has a fresh data to append or to update to it. Uh, there is a way to do that. I actually do have another video on the Smart Tech Hero channel that explains that. It's uh, called uh, How to Automatically Clear Data from Google Sheets. So I'll put a link to that YouTube video in the comments sections below as well. But basically that's all there is to uh, set up the zap and have it automatically download a custom object data every single night with hardly using any tasks. One thing I probably should have pointed out earlier is the step number two right here, the get and webhooks by Zapier, we actually do not need that for this particular zap. I just put that in there for demonstration purposes so you could see what kind of data the API call was returning. But actually that run Python and code by Zapier step pulls this exact same API. So it's a little redundant. So you could actually delete step two in the zap and everything would still work fine. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help you out. Uh, until then, I'll see you in the next video.